What is your name, please? My name is Hank Thor. What is your name, please? My name is Hank Thor. What is your name, please? My name is Hank Thor. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Hank Thor and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you. Thank you and good evening. We're here again with our game of deliberate misrepresentation, wherein our panel tries to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To Tell the Truth is brought to you by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is Hi Gardner. <laughs> now, these three people all claim to be Hank Sawyer. Of course, only one is the real Hank Sawyer. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of the affidavit that I'm about to read to you? I, Hank Soar, am a baseball umpire in the American League. Off-season, I am a state snow removal supervisor and road inspector. I have coached both basketball and football. And for 10 years, I played in the backfield of the New York football Giants. Signed, Hank Soar. Now, uh, while our challengers are taking their places, I'll remind you that these people all claim to be Hank Soar, American League umpire. Remember, please, panel, that only the real Hank Soar is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question, as usual, until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you will be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Hank Soar. And let's start our first round tonight with uh, Polly Burke. Polly? Um, number one... Uh, do you ever get the feeling that, uh, that people don't like you very much? Not very often. Really? You never had anything thrown at you? No, sir. Oh, no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just may. Uh, number two, uh, who, owns, who owns the Giants? Stoneham. Number three, who owns the Giants? Stoneham. Uh, number one, could you tell me, uh, who is the supervisor of umpires for the American League? Cal Hubbard. Uh, number three, have you ever, uh, reversed a decision after you've made it while umpiring a game? Never. Never? Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number three, in case of a, in, in baseball, in case of a difference of opinion among the umpires, whose decision determines it? It's called the, the umpires are called together by the chief, umpire in chief. And the man nearest to play, if it's the chosen amongst them, makes the decision. Uh -huh. Uh, number one, uh, how do the uh, scorekeepers on the big board get your signals so quickly? Uh, by the raising of the arm. They take it from your... I believe that's Your right. hand signals, number two? Raising of the arm. Uh, um, Kitty Carla. Number one, if you make a decision and you're wrong, what do you do? I'm never wrong. <laughs> Your wife must love that. She's the only one right. She what? She's the only one right, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I've never seen a baseball game, but I'd like to know why there seems to be so much controversy about decisions. Are the rules so lax that there's that much leeway? I see pictures always of angry people hitting umpires. No, the rules are not lax. Well, what makes the trouble? The umpire is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, who alerts you when you have an extra heavy snowfall, and how much time do you get? The Weather Bureau. We get a 24-hour notice. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number one, what famous ball player uh, chews the bubble gum? Mickey Mantle. Uh, also, number one, uh, who was considered the dean and the most beloved of all baseball umpires? recently died. Well, there's two of them that died. It was a pretty good, uh, uh, beloved dean of umpires. Who? Depends on which league you're in talking about. 
talking about uh, one who was retired from the National League. Uh, I believe that's Bill Clem. Uh, number three, uh, why, when you brush off the home plate, do you always turn your back uh, towards the pitcher? Respect to the people in the stands. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Sorry. <laughs> Polly? What does the pitcher feel about that? I'm not concerned with the pitcher. <laughs> uh, number two, uh, could you tell me who else was in the backfield with you when you were uh, playing football? Tuffy Lehman, Nella Pulaski, and Ward Cuff. Uh, number one, how long ago were you playing football? Uh, let me see. <laughs> 1937, I started. Now it's time to vote, panel. We have no further time for questioning. Without consultation, will you mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Remember, please, that the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. That means if they fool the entire panel, they may divide as much as $1,000. All right, panel, ballots all marked. Polly is musing. <laughs> Polly, are you all done? Yes, sir. Okay, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Uh, actually, he, I think he knew the most about baseball. I don't know anything about baseball, so it was hard for me to tell. <laughs> but uh, he seemed to be pretty fast with his answers. Ralph, who did you vote for? Number one. Mainly because uh, he sounds as if he had an umpire's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle, you voted for? Number two. I think number one is blind. He called Polly, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and the high gardener. Uh, I voted for number three. Uh, he was the only one that wasn't perspiring under the hot light, actually. <laughs> All right, there you are. Agree or disagree with our reasons? We'll find out how well you did right now. Because we're going to find out which of these gentlemen is the real American League umpire. Will the real Hank Soar please stand up? Yeah! <laughs> now, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Al Owen, and I'm the general manager of the New York University Club. And number three, what about you, sir? My name is Dick Tetzloff. I'm a motorcycle patrolman in Jersey City, New Jersey. <laughs> I don't know about this turning your back on the people in the stands. What about the people in the bleachers? <laughs> now, we won't go into that now, because as we see, there were two incorrect votes. At $250 each for a total of $500 from Jarrett Hall, gentlemen. Enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed your visit to us as much as we enjoyed having you here. Good night and the best of good luck to you. Yes, hi. I still say I was right with my choice because I think a motorcycle cop is even rougher than an umpire. <laughs> At times, I think you're right. And we'll find out what's in store for us in our next set of challenges. In just now, may we have our next set of challenges, please? What is your name, please? My name is Constance Wolfe. What is your name, please? My name is Constance Wolfe. What is your name, please? My name is Constance Wolfe. All right, panel, once again, will you follow along as I read you this affidavit? I, Constance Wolfe, am the only active, licensed woman balloon pilot in America. Just last week, I returned from Holland, where I represented the United States in an international balloon race. And recently, I was a technical advisor on ballooning for the motion picture Around the World in 80 Days. Signed, Constance Wolf. <laughs> now, as you know, panel, these three people claim to be Constance Wolf, lady balloonist. Remember again that only the real Constance Wolf is required to answer your questions truthfully. And if our challenges are ready, as I see they are, we'll start our questioning this round with uh, Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number one, who was Montgolfier? 
Montgolfier invented the balloon. He was a Frenchman, one of two brothers. <coughs> Number two, who was Santos Dumont? He was also a French pilot. Uh, a pilot? A what balloon pilot. pilot. Three I... balloon pilots. Number three, how does a woman become a balloonist? Well, she has to, of course, know about meteorology, and uh, she has to know all the rules of the CAA. Of the CAA? Where did you go to balloon school? In uh, Washington, D.C. Hi, Gardner. Number one, uh, what did, uh, why, why is helium gas uh, the best gas to use for balloons? It's not inflammable. It's also, number one, uh, can you tell me who is Bill Dahl? I beg pardon? Who is Bill Dahl? Bill Dahl. Um. And number two, do you know who Bill Dahl is? I do. He's the press agent. Um, I'm sorry. Mike Todd's press agent. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, uh, who was Commander Rosendahl? Uh, Commander Rosendahl was uh, the light of the air commander at Lakehurst. Yeah, and, and, and also number two, uh, what were the names of the two famous balloonists who set a lot of records, a couple of brothers? Who did what? A couple of brothers who set a lot of records with balloons. Uh, Picard and his wife. Holly? Was it? <laughs> I never get any help from Holly. It's such a blank. Uh, number three, uh, do you smoke when you're up in your balloon? No, I do not. Why not? I don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I simply think it's rather a, a nasty habit. Not useful. <laughs> We've got some real troublemakers. <laughs> yes, we have. Um, I was just teasing. Number two, uh, how do you race a balloon? Do you, do you, uh, are you a free balloonist? A free balloon. Pilot. Well, how do you race a free balloon? I mean, how do you make it go in a specific direction? Um, you uh, can't uh, control the direction of a balloon. You go where the wind goes. Where the wind takes you. Oh, oh. Ralph? Uh, number one, what's the highest altitude which a, a balloon has reached? 75,000 feet. Number two, same question. I believe uh, that it's over 100,000 feet now. The mm. old record has been Number broken. three. Yes, it's over 100,000 feet. Uh, number two, what was the first transatlantic um, heavier-than-air flight? Heavier than air. Uh, a 19 uh, Lindbergh flight. Lindbergh's flight? Yes. Uh, number one, uh, under what department are you licensed? Under the um, department of the CAA, that's uh, a division of the Chamber of Commerce. Kitty? Number three, where do you come from? St. Louis, Missouri. Number one, where do you come from? Cleveland, Ohio. Number two, in that charming balloon that went up in Around the World in 80 Days, did it really go up or was it only uh, uh, an illusion that was created in the studio? Uh, the flight over France was a, 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 a free flight followed by an airplane taking the pictures. Well, I saw the balloon. Was it possible for that balloon to do that? Oh, yes. Again, it's time to vote. No consultation. Mark your ballots. Select number one. Oh, dear, this is <laughs> <laughs> number two or number three? Okay, panel, how are we? All marked and voted? There goes Polly's vote. For whom did you vote, Polly? <laughs> I voted for number two. Actually, uh, I was fairly, all kidding aside, I was fairly certain it was number one, but I couldn't figure on, a, on, on someone who was lying being number two Telling number one she was wrong if number one was the real person. Yes, Polly. Yes, you couldn't indeed. say that again. Could you? <laughs> Don't bet she couldn't. I, I followed it. Right, <laughs> right you let it. Ralph, well, number two. Number two just seemed to be uh, readier with the answers and seemed to have uh, more information. I think it was the difference between the seventy-five and the hundred thousand. That's finally. what I said. Uh, <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number two. <laughs> I just think number two has the look of a lady balloonist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that look is, but High Gardner is sporting an enigmatic one. Who do you vote for? Well, I also voted for number two. <laughs> Unanimous. Now, now we've got to be wrong. I voted for number two. I thought that number one's answers made an awful lot of sense, and they were right, and so did number two. But number two, for some reason, looks like the type of, of woman who, at the slightest provocation, would go up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of that one. 
All right. Now, let's see. We've got our votes in, and we've given you our reasons. I hope yours are as good, and that your guessing is as good as ours, too. We're going to find out right now which one of these charming ladies is the real lady balloonist. Will the real Constance Wolf please stand up? Well, the panel can be proud of that. Incidentally, uh, Mrs. Wolf was supposed actually to be in Philadelphia today at the Powder Puff Derby, sponsored by the Aero Club of Pennsylvania, I believe. Is that not right? And we thank you for taking your evening off and spending it with us. It's a pleasure having you here. All right, let's find out about the other two now. Number one, who are you really and what do you do? My name is Lynn Whitney. I'm a freelance writer and editorial worker. <laughs> And number three, how about you? My name is Elva Pohl, and I'm a retired health education chairman of one of the girls' high schools in the city. Ah. <laughs> now you know why she doesn't smoke. Now I know why she doesn't <laughs> Well, even though the panel did well, uh, from Geritol, we would like to award you ladies $150. We hope you enjoyed your visit to us. We certainly had uh, quite a bit of excitement figuring out who you were. <laughs> And uh, let's just live down this reputation of going up in the air, shall we? <laughs> good night and the best Thank of good you. luck to you. Thank you. Well, very good, very good, panel. And she sure was. And in just one minute, we give you three new challenges. Team challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is John Arden. What is your name, please? My name is John Arden. What is your name, please? My name is John Arden. All right, panel, here we go again. Follow along, will you please, on your copies of this affidavit. I, John Arden, am a jack of all trades. I've been a hat cleaner, a gandy dancer, a steel worker, and I've held a job in a shoe repair shop. Once I worked under the ground as a coal miner, but I've since risen to my current position of window washer in the tallest building in the world, the Empire State Building. Signed, John Arden. <laughs> I don't think uh, you've been 100% right in more than two other cases, have you? No, we've been 100% wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's more right. More than you've been right. All right, these <laughs> gentlemen all claim to be John Arden, window washer, in the world's tallest building, the Empire State Building. Each of you question again until you hear the signal, and we will start this time with the uh, High Garden. Hi. Number one, uh, while you were washing windows at the Empire State Building, did you ever see Mrs. Wolf float by the balloon? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll be looking for her now, Hi. <laughs> uh, uh, number three, what is that uh, sticky sort of stuff they use in repairing shoes to make something adhere to something else? Uh, cement. Uh, any particular kind of cement? I wouldn't know. Would you know number two? Rubber cement. Uh, number two, uh, I would like to ask this question. Are window washers uh, permitted to buy insurance? They can get partial coverage. Partial coverage. Uh, number one, what is, it? what exactly is a Gandhi dancer? A Gandhi dancer is a man who uh, walks along the track and repairs the ties and the ballast and that type of thing, sees that everything's wrong. In other words, he dances when a train's coming along so he doesn't get hit. Is that the... <laughs> dances out of the way or else. Holly Bergen. Number two, I'm interested in what part you can insure. The part that gets hurt. Oh. <laughs> right, that is part insurance, have you confused. Number one, uh, who washes your windows at home? Usually my wife. Uh, I figure. Uh, number one, could you tell me how many windows in the Empire State Building? Well, I get asked that about every day. There are better than 6,000 windows in the Empire 6, State Building. 6,000. Number two, um, could you tell me what what is piling? Piling? Mm-hmm. Piling is used to support buildings. Uh, number three, uh, what do you use to put piling in? What's that? What do you use uh, as a steel worker to, to put piling in the ground? I said you were a steel worker. You... Ralph, number one, where do most Panama hats come from? Panama. Number two. Ecuador. Number three. Panama. 
Uh, number one, who's the uh, president of the Steelworkers Union? I don't know. Number two? David McDonald. Number three? I won't know. Um, number, number two, how much sway is there in the Empire State Building? No sway at all. No sway at all. None number whatsoever. one. How much no sway? sway? No number sway. three? I'd say about a quarter of an inch. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Number one, what is more dangerous, coal mining or doing the windows of the Empire State Building? I'd say coal mining. Number two, what is an awl and how do you spell it? An awl is spelled A-W-L and it's used to punch holes in leather. Number three, do you ever dream of falling? No, I never did. Number one, do you ever look down? Yes, on occasion. Oh, what do you see when you look down? <laughs> Small cars, people. <laughs> Does it make you nervous? No. That's it. Time to vote now, nervous or not. Will you mark your ballots, <laughs> battle? And mark for number one. Number two. Or number three. Votes all in, mine's made up. All set, Polly? No. no. Hey, we're getting it. <laughs> Hot off the crayon. Ready, Polly? Oh, One, two, or mind. three, and it's number what? <clears throat> number two. Actually, there are several times when uh, he seemed to come out with an answer that the other two didn't seem to know the answer to. So I just sort of figured maybe I'd vote for him. <laughs> Ralph, who did you vote? Number two. We're both wrong, I can tell you. <laughs> Number two, um, knew the, of course, it's general information, but he knew the president of the uh, Steelworkers Union, and he knew that most Panama hats come from Ecuador. <laughs> Kitty, how about you? Your vote? Well, I voted for number three. I agree with Ralph that that was very good information from number two, but I prefer to believe that the Empire State Building does sway. Not a quarter. <laughs> Even a quarter of an inch. I don't care. It sways. By me, it sways. All right. Hi, Gardner. If it didn't sway, you know, it would fall over. It has to sway. Oh. That is something that's just definite. Number three, uh, he's not quite as eloquent as the other two, but uh, he looks like the type of man who would not step back to admire his work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we have a split vote right down the middle, right. and I trust that you have made up your minds, too. Let's see how well you did in your own scoring. We'll find out which of these gentlemen is the real Empire State Building window washer. Ralph and I want to change our vote. Sorry, can't do it. <laughs> Don't step back to admire your work, either. Will the real John Arden please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Yes, yeah, you're not serious about a quarter of an inch. There must be a sway in the Empire State Building. You just don't know what it is. <laughs> he played it safe and called it a quarter of an inch. Now, window washer number one. Will you tell us who you really are? My name is Jack Young. I sell accident insurance. <laughs> For whom do you work, Jack? I work for the New York Life Insurance Company in Westwood, New Jersey. I see. All right. Now, window washer number two, for whom do you work? My name is William Bell. I sell parachutes. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's the name of your company? Reliance Manufacturing Company, New York City. Well, as you can gather from the way we called off the scores here, there were two incorrect votes at $250 each. For a total of $500 in Jared Hall, gentlemen, good night. Thanks for being with us, and the best of good luck to you. <laughs> now, we'll return in just... Well, I guess uh, that's all the time we have for tonight, except to say good night, panel. Good night, Bud. Bud. And good night to all of you as well, of course. Until next week, saying good night for Jared Hall, this is Bud Collier reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Yes, the phone to New York aboard American famous luxury flight to DC-7 Mercury. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Sports equipment, courtesy of Wilson Sporting Goods. <laughs>